All right, we're going to look at some gas stoichiometry. Now, for these questions that we're answering, the answers are already provided. So we're just merely going through the process of solving them. So let's go ahead and get started. Now, when solving gas stoichiometry problems, part of it starts with understanding the ideal gas equation. That's PV equals NRT or PIV equals NERT or whatever people uh, abbreviate it for. But uh, PV equals NRT is going to be an invaluable tool. You'll pro probably also need to know the relationship between stoichiometry when it comes down to the reaction of problems and so forth. So let's get started. A sample of nitrogen gas has a volume of 1.75 liters at SCP. How many moles of nitrogen are present? So we begin by establishing what SCP is. And SCP stands for standard temperature and pressure. And that means that the temperature is going to be 0 degrees Celsius, which is 273 Kelvin. This also implies that the pressure, P1, is 1 atm of pressure. So now we have pressure, we have temperature, we have volume, and we do want to make sure that we know our rate constant. Now our rate constant is usually given, and we'll come back to that uh but it's like 0 0.0821, uh, we'll get into that. But let's go ahead and just set it up, basically, using the PV equals NRT. So, in this case, we're solving for, perhaps, how many moles. And N is actually going to be what constitute number of moles. So let's look at it from the arrangement of being solved for N. N is actually equal to PV over RT. And that's just by dividing RT by both sides and you end up with it in the denominator. Now knowing that, I can then plug in the numbers that I do know. I know that under standard conditions my pressure is going to be 1 atm. My volume is given in the question as 1.75 uh, liters. And then if we go down For our R value, we have 0.0821, and the units there are actually ATMs, liters over moles, Kelvin. And we're going to multiply that by the temperature of 273. Now, solving that in our trusty dusty calculator, we're going to Take 1 ATM, multiply that by 1.75. We'll next divide that by 0.0821. And then we'll next divide that by 273, which is this number. Now, according to this question, our answer probably should reflect about three significant figures. So that would equate to 0.078. One, and the answers for that would be moles of nitrogen. Now, obviously, that's very similar to the answer given. The only difference that is in scientific notation, but it is one and the same. So it does check out. The great thing about that question is all it is referring to is just moles as they relate to the ideal gas equation. But let's see if there's another question that perhaps takes it up a notch in terms of level of rationale and complicated ability. All right. So in this next question about gas stoichiometry, it's telling us that quicklime, calcium oxide, is produced by the thermal decomposition of calcium carbonate. We're going to calculate the volume of carbon dioxide at standard temperature and pressure produced from the decomposition of 152 grams of calcium carbonate by the reaction below. Now the first thing I look at is I make sure that my reaction is balanced. And looking at it, I see that my calcium is checked out. 
I have one carbon here, one carbon there, and then my oxygen check out as well. Three here and three oxygen there. So I don't have to balance the chemical equation, which is a plus. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the amount of mass given so that I can use that value uh, later on. So let's go ahead and try doing that by saying, okay, we have 152 grams of this calcium carbonate. And we are trying to find the volume as it refers to this guy, carbon dioxide. Now, I would first recommend converting this 152 grams to moles and then applying the mole ratio to get the number of moles of carbon dioxide. Let's do that, shall we? We know that 152 grams of the calcium carbonate needs to be converted to moles. To do that, you need to know what one mole of calcium carbonate is. You will need your periodic table to determine that information. And so it does come in handy if you have one uh, at your disposal or if you just have kind of a quick access. Sometimes the uh, molar mass may be given. In this case, the value is uh, 100. 0.09 grams, and all that's referring to calcium carbonate. So then I'm going to use that value to find the number of moles of this uh, calcium carbonate. So 152 divided by 100.09, and that gives me roughly 1.52 moles of this stuff here. So if that, that, that's the case, I have 1.52 moles of calcium carbonate. And if I multiply by the mole ratio between the two, I should see that there's a one-to-one -one mole ratio, and therefore, if I have 1.52 moles of carbon, I mean calcium carbonate, I'm actually going to have 1.52 moles of carbon dioxide. But I'm not finished. I actually have to use that to determine the value of liters of carbon dioxide. Now, enter the ideal gas equation. PV equals nRT, and since I'm given the list of a few variables, I should be able to kind of convert accordingly, knowing that we're dealing with SCP. Well, what SCP implies, again, is that pressure is going to be 1 atm. It's also going to imply that temperature is going to be 273 Kelvin. And so we have this value, which actually is going to represent N for CO2, because remember, we're looking for this stuff as it relates to CO2. We know our rate constant, 0.0821, because we've solved that before and kind of calculated for it. So let's go ahead and set up the equation. If the standard equation of PV equals nRT is represented, if we were solving for V, V would be represented as nRT divided by P. And let's go ahead and plug those numbers in. We have 1.52 moles. We have our rate constant, which is 0 0.0821, and that's ATMs, liters over moles times Kelvin. And then we need our temperature, which in this case is 273 Kelvin. And that's going to be divided by our pressure. And remember, our pressure is actually 1. So that's pretty cool. Now, judging from this question, we started off with three sig figs. I imagine that when we solve it, our answer needs to have three sig figs. So let's go ahead and try using our calculator to solve. 1.52 times 0 0.0821. And I don't know why I needlessly did not include a 0 there. There should be a 0 right there for visual purposes, want to be consistent. Uh, 
we're going to multiply that by 273. And we're going to get this for our answer. Now, remember I said we have to have three sig figs. And so that actually rounds off to be equal to 34.1 liters of CO2. And that answer checks out with what's given for the question. So that's